Hey, it's Joe. Another day, another story. Imagine a grand hall, shimmering with the glow of torches filled with the presence of divine figures. This is the Hall of Ma'at, a place where the souls of the deceased come to be judged. At the heart of this hall stands a set of scales, one side holding a feather, light and delicate, and the other awaiting the heart of the deceased. This is the scene of a profound and timeless ritual, the weighing of the heart against the feather of Ma'at. In ancient Egyptian mythology, Ma'at represents truth, balance, order, and justice. She is often depicted as a goddess with an ostrich feather in her hair, symbolizing the principle she embodies. The concept is central to the Egyptian worldview, influencing their understanding of the cosmos, society, and individual conduct. Imagine living in a society where every action is measured against a divine standard of truth and balance. How different would our world be today? The journey to the Hall of Mat begins after death. The soul, or Ka, embarks on a voyage through the underworld, encountering various challenges and deities. This journey is meticulously detailed in the Egyptian Book of the Dead, a collection of spells and instructions to guide the deceased through the afterlife. The ultimate destination is her hall, where the final judgment takes place. Think of it as a spiritual obstacle course designed to test the soul's worthiness. As the soul stands before Osiris, the god of the afterlife, Anubis, the vacation in the afterlife, carefully places the heart of the deceased on one side of the scales. On the other side rests the feather of Mat. Thoth, the ibis-headed god of wisdom and writing, records the outcome. This moment is crucial, as it determines the fate of the soul. The heart in Egyptian belief is the seat of the soul and the repository of one's deeds and intentions. It carries the weight of a person's actions, thoughts, and feelings. If the heart is heavier than the feather, it means that the individual led a life burdened by wrongdoing, dishonesty, and imbalance. Such a soul is deemed unworthy and is devoured by Amit, a fearsome creature with the body of a lion, the head of a crocodile, and the hindquarters of a hippopotamus. This fate represents a final and irreversible death, the end of existence. Imagine the ultimate consequence of living a life out of balance and truth, total annihilation. However, if the heart is lighter than or equal in weight to the feather, it signifies a life lived in accordance with Mat, one of truth, justice, and balance. The soul is then granted passage to the field of reeds, a paradise where the deceased can enjoy eternal peace and happiness, reunited with loved ones and the divine. Picture a serene, eternal landscape where harmony and peace reign supreme. This brings us to the profound metaphor of the allegory. It is not just an ancient ritual, but a timeless lesson for living a righteous life. It teaches us that our actions and intentions have weight and that living in truth and balance is essential for our spiritual well-being. In our modern world, the principles are just as relevant. We are constantly faced with choices that test our integrity and balance. The feather reminds us to seek justice, truth, and harmony in our daily lives. It urges us to wear our hearts regularly, to reflect on our actions, and to strive for a life that is light and unburdened by dishonesty and injustice. Consider the daily decisions we make. Each one is an opportunity to live in alignment with our higher self. The concept also highlights the interconnectedness of society. In ancient Egypt, Mat was not just only a personal virtue, but a cosmic principle that governed the universe and societal order. Pharaohs were seen as the earthly embodiment of Mat, responsible for maintaining balance and justice in their reign, underscoring the idea that our individual actions contribute to a collective harmony and that we each play a role in upholding the principles of truth 
and justice in our own communities. Imagine the impact if each of us took responsibility for maintaining balance and justice in our own lives and communities. Now let's transition from the ancient halls to a more esoteric perspective. The allegory and the weighing of the heart against the feather also resonates deeply with esoteric teachings about the heart chakra. In various spiritual traditions, the heart chakra, known as Anahata in Sanskrit, is considered the center of love, compassion, and spiritual awakening. It is the fourth chakra, located at the center of the chest, and is depicted as a green lotus flower with 12 petals. Opening the heart chakra is seen as a vital step in one's spiritual journey. It involves healing emotional wounds, fostering forgiveness, and cultivating unconditional love. When the heart chakra is balanced and open, it is said that individuals can experience a profound sense of inner peace, connection to others, and alignment with their higher self. Think of the heart chakra as a gateway to deeper emotional and spiritual connection. The heart chakra is also associated with the concept of living in harmony with the universe's rhythms. Much like the principles of Mat, it emphasizes the importance of aligning our actions with our highest values and living authentically. Just as the heart in Egyptian mythology must be light and balanced against the feather, our heart chakra must be free from the burdens of negative emotions and past traumas to achieve enlightenment. Imagine the heart chakra as a delicate balance point, needing careful nurturing to stay aligned. In esoteric traditions, the process of opening the heart chakra again involves meditation, but there's also energy healing and just living mindfully. These practices help to release blockages and open the flow of energy, allowing for a deeper connection to the divine and a more profound understanding of our own place. Think of these practices as the tools to keep our heart chakra open and our spiritual journey on track. As we reflect on the teachings, let us strive to live in a way that honors these timeless principles. By doing so, we can create a life that is not only balanced and harmonious, but also deeply connected to the divine and the greater universal order. Thanks for listening and keep questioning everything. Human Fluence, out.